Hi, welcome back to chapter 3 of tutorial 7. In this chapter, we're looking at the uh, extension of cases, which uh, particularly regarding permit applications. Now, permit applications are still cases on SARS, but they're slightly different to uh, other types of cases. The permit applications require a site or an object to exist in SARS in the national inventory before making your permit application. So that's the only difference between a development uh, under Section 38 of the National Heritage Resources Act um, and a permit application. So um, at AMARFA they also use the KwaZulu-Natal Act uh, or the KwaZulu-Natal Heritage Act. So they've got slightly different sections of the Act which apply to the general protections uh, which are um, set out as Section 34, 35, 36 in the National Heritage Resources Act, um, but they're very similar, and uh, it's just their permit templates are configured to, to come out in their um, sections of the Act which apply. But everybody in the country is dealing with Section 38 for uh, developments bigger than 5,000 meters square, or re uh, zoning, subdivisions, um, developments longer than 300 meters, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's get on to a permit application. Right, the first thing you want to do is check SARS um, for a site. So if you're the case officer, normally you would be checking your applicant's um, case and seeing whether they've um, filled in the correct information and whether they've linked the site. So let's go to a, um, an existing one and we, we can follow the process. So I'm going to look up a permit application which came up recently. Let's have a look at this one. This is uh, Sibudu, which is in KZN. Um, <coughs> the, uh, the applicant has filled in various citations quite exhaustively. They've ad uploaded additional information to the additional docs. They've chosen correctly the type of permits. They've they're with Mar for the Heritage Authority. Um, this, if it was a national heritage site, then this would be SARA. Um, and this happens to be one site where there is a possibility of this um, Sabudu site being upgraded uh, from, not upgraded, but formally declared as a national heritage site in the future. But until that happens, um, the application would go to a MAFA for the uh, permits. The case is under pending and under assessment. The case officer um, has been not been linked yet to this one. so. Um, they would have to assign a case officer and um, it doesn't have a map because it's linked to a site in the inventory. The site is uh, Supudu, so under link to you've got the sites listed that the permit application is for and um, this links us to the site. If we had rights to the organic group um, then uh, we would be seeing this as heritage officers, which we do in this case. Um, but if we were not members of the organic group for the site and it had been set to private, we would simply not see anything here. We wouldn't be able to link to the site. We would just have the reference. Um, so that's great. I know that this site is actually already recorded in the KZN Museum database as 29 something. And uh, so this site really should be linked to the correct site recording so that there's no duplicate um, site on the system. But the applicant did this right at the beginning of SARS, so um, they've made a, a mistake, which is understandable. Um, so that's one of the things you'd be checking, is that they haven't created a new site recording for something that already exists in the system. Um, right, so under the various flags, let's go and have a look there. So A, the site needs to exist. If the site doesn't exist, the applicant needs to go to create sites and then create a site recording as well for the um, site. Remember the one-to-many relationship between sites and site recordings. So at a very basic level, we would require a basic site and a basic site recording in the system before the permit application. Um, once they've made their permit application, under inventory links, they uh, reference that site number that they've used under the uh, sites and then they've linked the site to the um, uh, to the case, the permit application. Uh, we don't need to map the development as such because it's not a development anymore, 
it's just a site um, directly linked for uh, to a permit application. So that's what uh, the mapping is provided for under the site level. Um, and uh, the other refs don't normally apply. This is incorrectly filled in because <coughs> the um, this department is not a government department, and uh, it shouldn't be um, referenced under here. This is more for developments, um, and uh, the, these people um, at these various departments would have been normally referenced under the uh, consultants or applicants list. Um, attached docs, you would expect to find perhaps some images around the case, but not many in sites you would find the case images linked to the site itself. The uh, if they have filled in the old permit application form during the transfer over to SARS, you'd expect to see it over here. The consent letters from the museum curating material and the landowner would be uploaded here. Um, and uh, any other motivation uh, for their um, permit application would be submitted over here. For buildings, section 34 of the NHRA, the alterations and demolitions, um, you might find the architectural plans the um, uh, uploaded over here and uh, a couple of photos of the site perhaps or uh, the new development perhaps that's proposed the of the uh, involving alterations um, uh, again it's optional you can upload many of that uh, many of the inf uh, historical record information under the site um, but for the new changes you submit it under the case under case inf intro, just make sure you've chosen permit. There's a very good reason why we haven't defined all the different types of permits here. Um, the reason is we're trying to keep this simple for the applicant who uh, may or may not know which sections of the act apply. Um, and it's in the generation of the actual permit that we specify alterations, additions, demolitions, modifications, uh, and so on and so forth. So in that, stage when the permit is approved, if it's approved, we then are able to query the database for um, permits via various criteria, which are the normal um, flags that people expect to how many permits have been issued for alterations over the year in a particular area. So we are still capturing that information just at a slightly later stage. Um, as a heritage officer, I found um, Constantly, the applicants had no idea whether they were dealing with Section 34, Section 27, Section 28, or Section 29, uh, or 35, or whether, in fact, it was just a Section 38 application handling um, uh, the, the, the application. So, um, we're keeping this simple. It's it's uh, it's bound to be incorrect when the applicants um, define the type of permit. Um, the other types, while we're here. Um, so for where the Heritage Authority is the decision maker in terms of a development triggering Section 38, then we choose Section 38.1. Um, if it's 38.8, we're a commentary body to Department of Environmental Affairs or mining or um, uh, can be provincial and or national level depending on the case. Um, it's where bigger legislation like NEMA or the MPRDA, the Mining for Petroleum Resources Development Act, um, are at play and heritage is a component of the um, ap application. Um, the permits that we've covered, nominations, decorations, so if you're nominating a site, very similar to permits, you would link it under inventory links um, to, and this the case will be the vehicle through which you handle the decoration and nom nomination process. The site management, this is if there are conservation issues around the site and uh, you'd like to log a case for that, visits the site, um, meet with certain people, um, log certain issues and meetings and so on. Object collection management, very similar to site management, just for objects. Uh, a rectification, so illegal work has been uh, done already, so it's not a development application. Um, this is in NEMA six, section 24G, or uh, compulsory repair orders, for instance, fall under this uh, in the NHRA. Um, there might be other case types we'll add over time, but um, we've we've covered most of them now. Um, for if it was a development type, then you would choose the subtype. We've got various uh, categories here. You'll notice the little minus signs um, mark the uh, type as a subtype of something above it. So we know that under renewable energy, we've got wind and solar. They've got two minus signs, 
and then uh, telecommunications infrastructure is a subset of infrastructure. If someone chooses infrastructure, then the database simply applies to all of its subsets, but it doesn't mean uh, that it, we don't have the uh, specific uh, category flagged. Um, so we try and get this as, in checking the cases, get this as tight as possible and as defined and as specific as possible. Um, for instance, a case might have electrical infrastructure and as, um, open cost mining or industrial, heavy in industrial um, works on the same application. So make sure they've chosen both of those types if those are the types of cases. Um, the agreement to the terms um, applies to heritage offices and to um, applicants, of course. Um, so if you are creating the case as, an, as the heritage officer on behalf of the applicant, and this is especially occurs during the transition phase to SARS, then make sure you've ticked yes. And any other field which has a red star, like the heritage authority, the terms, and the applicant, um, these are minimum fields that must be uh, filled in. Otherwise, when you hit save, the case won't, uh, it will give you an error message indicating that you haven't filled in all the required information. Right, so let's stop the tutorial uh, there for this chapter and move on to chapter four.